Ladies and gents, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over every single heavy weapon in Fallout 4 and ranking them whether they're bad or good. Now for this listing, I am basing uh, the term heavy weapon off of if, it's, if it is affected by the heavy gunner perk. Now I'm not exactly sure why you clicked on this video to listen to my horrible voice for about 5-10 to 10 minutes, but while you're here, just click that like button. It takes you less time to click that like button than it took me to spawn in one of these weapons. But come on, just help, just help me out, man. Come on, I'll give you a cookie, maybe? I don't, that's a lie, I won't. Anyways, let's get started. First up, we have the minigun. Now the minigun's fire rate uh, goes to show that it's pretty good. Your damage output is actually very lackluster in the minigun. That's actually where it falls off the most is it does fire at a good fire rate. However, the damage just isn't that much to make up for it. Your reload speed's uh, pretty good considering it's a minigun. You can obtain the minigun uh, right as soon as you enter Conquer to help out Preston Garvey. Your ammo cost for the minigun will be your 5mm rounds. The minigun is a decent option for an early game heavy gunner build. However, I wouldn't recommend using it late game. So for a final rating, I give the minigun a 5 out of 10. Next up, we have the Fat Man. The Fat Man is one of the most, if not the most powerful heavy weapon in the game, but ironically, you can find it, you can find it before you even and get the minigun. If you go to the salvage yard, uh, left a sanctuary across the little pond slash river, uh, you can find it in a pile of cars. Now your fire rate for the fat man is atrocious since it's one shot and then a reload. Your damage output is insane considering it's a tiny nuke. Your reload speed is okay. Um, not really. It's, it's not, it's not great. Your ammo cost will be your fat man nukes is, I don't, is that what they're called? Mini nuke, that's it. Whoa, how did I forget that? So they're gonna be quite expensive, quite rare for you to find. The Fat Man comes good in a, it come, it, <laughs> fucking me, dude. The Fat Man comes good in clutch, in a crunch, and a Fat Man comes good in a crunch. Final rating, I give the Fat Man a 7.87 out of 10. Next up, we have your Gatling laser. Now I'm a huge fan of the Gatling laser. Um, I think it's one of the best, if not the best, heavy weapon in the game. Your fire rate for the Gatling laser is going to be quite good, considering it's just a minigun with uh, fusion core laser ammo. Your damage output is much better than that of the minigun. Your reload speed's uh, about the same as the minigun. You can obtain the Gatling laser about mid to late game once you ally with the Brotherhood of Steel. Your ammo cost for the Gatling laser will be fusion cores, so quite expensive, quite rare. Like I said, the Gatling lasers, it's a very good use. If you're going for a heavy gunner build, I suggest this being one of your main weapons in the late game. Final rating, I give the Gatling laser a 9.8 out of 10. Next up, we have the missile launcher. Now the missile launcher is quite good, um, I'd say about mid to early game. Your fire rate is not amazing. It is by default a single shot and reload, but you can upgrade it to a quad barrel, allowing you to fire, of course, four shots before you need to reload. Your damage output, quite good, considering it's a fucking missile. You can obtain the missile launcher about mid, or, uh, early to mid game. Your ammo cost for the missile launcher will be, of course, your missiles. So quite expensive. Most most of these heavy guns are gonna have quite expensive ammo. Uh, the missile launcher is a decent use. Late late game, I think you have better options. But leading up to that, I think a missile launcher will be a good bet for you. So for final rating, I give the missile launcher an 8.2 out of 10. Next up, we have the cryolator. What a disappointing gun for how you need to obtain it. However, you can use the dog meat glitch to uh, just get it out. I don't know if they patched that or not. Those, it, it's a pretty old glitch. Anyways, your fire rate for the cryolator is really good uh, but basically what it does if you do not know the cryolator freezes your enemy slowing them or in some cases completely freezing them for a bit reload speed is decent you can obtain it uh, the legit way by going back to vault 111 you will find it in a storage locker that needs a master lock picking skill for you to open your ammo cost for the cryolator will be your cryo cells by the time you get it there's just better options final rating i give the cryolator a 5.5 it's not much better than the minigun. Next up, we have the Flamer. Now, the thing about the Flamer is that it's not amazing. Now, your damage output for the Flamer is not that great. Your reload speed is decent. You can obtain the Flamer. When can you obtain the Flamer? Uh, I know you can obtain the Flamer from the Forged Factory. Um, pretty much every enemy you run across in there will have a Flamer. Uh, so I'd say about mid to late game is a safe bet. I don't see you getting the Flamer any earlier than 15, if I'm honest. Um, unless you go there. If you do, good luck, man. Your ammo cost for the Flamer will be your fuel. Your fuel is not going to be expensive. Final rating, I give the Flamer a 6 out of 10. Next up, we have the Broadsider. The Broadsider's fire rate is atrocious, considering it is a reload after one shot. Your damage output is quite decent. 
your reload speed for the broadsider is quite decent i mean most i've i've noticed with most of these reload speeds a lot of them are decent so i think i'm gonna start putting like seconds or some shit i don't know Did i put this in we're putting it in you can obtain the broadsider once you do the quest don't know what it's called man uh basically you see a ship on a building and it's run by fucking robots right and then you do their mission and they're like hey have this cannon gun you're like sweet your ammo cost for the broadsider will be your cannonballs they're kind of expensive kind of rare uh you can find a lot in the castle considering it's a castle they got cannonballs come on uh this gun's more it's kind of like the cryolator it's a one-of-a-kind thing not too much of like an actual use for it like consistently what am i talking about basically i'm gonna give the broadsider a i'll give it a 6.46 out of 10 only because you know it's pretty unique speaking of unique we have the junk jet now if you do not know what the junk jet does is it is the only gun in the entire game that fires junk once you reload the junk jet it'll show up a prompt for you to put junk in it every piece of junk you put in it will be one ammo and you just shoot fucking junk at people you can shoot teddy bears at people man come on can't get much better than that 10 out of 10 no but for real the fire rate is decent your damage output's not great reload speed honest i i don't know how to judge this one since it brings up a menu not many weapons have you bring up a menu to reload so anywhere from Amazing to fucking horrible if you go walk your dog before you reload. I don't know, dude. I don't know what you do in your spare time. You can obtain the junk jet once you go... Is it Poseidon Energy? No, that ain't it. It's some energy factory that you go in with Paladin Dance. You fight off some synths, and once you get to the bottom and fire a rocket, you can see the junk gun quite clearly on the table. Our ammo cost for the junk gun is junk. Final rating for the junk gun. I just realized I've been calling it the junk gun. It's junk jet. Just for that, I'll give it a, I don't know, 8 out of 10 for the memes. And last but not least, if I haven't scared you off yet with my shitty jokes and shitty commentary we have the harpoon gun fire rate for the harpoon gun is not great it is a one shot reload your damage output for the harpoon gun is quite good fun fact about the harpoon gun is that if you shoot an enemy's limb there's a chance for it to dismember and stick into a wall behind it <laughs> isn't that cool uh your reload speed's pretty decent it's about the same as the gatling laser you can obtain the harpoon gun in the far harbor dlc Pretty much as soon as you get there your ammo cost will be your harpoons uh they're kind of expensive kind of rare I haven't really found many harpoons out in the wild, so I suggest buying them if you're going to use it. If you're going to be using this gun, honestly, I feel like it's kind of underrated. I can see you using this gun, not into the late, late game, but it's there. So for a final rating on the harpoon gun, I'm going to give it a... I gotta think about this one. I'm going to give it an 8.43 out of 10. So, ladies and gents, if I'm not dumb, that does it for the all the heavy weapons in Fallout 4. I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in for another episode of, uh, is this gun great or good? I don't know. We need a name for this series. Anyways, if you made it to the end, you're not subbed. Come on, man. You like the video enough. You might as well hit that red button, you know, so I can start getting paid, bro, with this... This shit's hard, bro. I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need this moolah. Anyways, I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in. Hope y'all have a wonderful day. Hug your dad. Tell your mom you love it. Peace.